Welcome to Gamer Station's Browser Games of the Week for the week of February 5th. And I'm your host, Steven Snakey Galenzi. Now we have a pack full list this week that we're going to have to put it into two different videos. Is this a sign of things to come or maybe it's just for this week only? We'll have to wait and see. What do frozen gifts, lightning, explosions, waves, and chain reactions have in common? If you guess science class, well, you're probably right, but I'm talking about this game, Icy Gifts. The goal of the game is to destroy as much of the objects on screen as you can with your only click, excluding the times that you can obtain more. The more you do, the more stars you get. As someone once said, it's always about the stars. After collecting enough gifts, you can upgrade things like the radius of your clicks, the ability to draw presents to your cursor, and upgrades for the powers of your power-ups. It's a nice little game that I can find being a good play to relax to. The goal of the game is to fill up the sky as much as possible, but there's no winning or losing really, just doing as good as you can. Hit certain stars to allow your star to be up in the sky longer and avoid the black ones. Just sit back and play it during a stressful day of work. Just make sure your boss isn't watching you. It's a spaceship game involving you ramming into other ships. Yeah, I'm sure that's the best idea for space combat. Hey, what's the weapons on this? Oh, you know, an extended bumper. Isn't that a dumb idea? Nah, it's more powerful than missiles, lasers, and anything else you need. In reality and in game, it really isn't. It's always best to make the enemy's missiles hit another enemy or to make them come back and hit themselves. Or use an asteroid. Born into darkness often seems to mean that you have a dark personality and are depressing or you sparkle out in the sun. In this game, it's about a little bug that is born into the darkness but is a creature of light. In each level, you are to destroy the shadows and the darkness to move on. When you destroy all, you'll be allowed to increase the stats of your bug, such as its glow, how fast it can shoot, the glow of your shots, etc. The game actually makes me think of asteroids in the later levels, if it had a level up system. If you're coming into this expecting this game to be a parody of Dante's Inferno, you will be sadly mistaken. The best way to describe it is a strategy, yellow, square, genocide game. At your disposal is fire, UFOs, and zombies. Yes, zombies, because every game needs zombies. You have a limited amount of those to use in a level, so that's where the strategy comes into place. This game definitely could benefit from some tutorials on how the game works and the purpose of each object, but you'll soon learn what each one does. I've ran the comments that this game has some bugs, but if I can't see them, then it doesn't exist. Like air. In this game, you're a mother who is trying to, or not so, keep her child out of the dangerous woods where horrible monsters and creatures are. Now, you can try to keep the child near the home throughout the game, or you can let your child get out of the house's radius. The issue is, if the child goes out of this radius, you can't chase after it because, well, that's what all good mothers do. While out in the wild, your child can level up and become more prepared to be an adult. The only real big issue is you can't pause the game. Really? What's with the games not thinking they need pause buttons now? Okay, I gotta admit up front. I didn't really get that far into this game as I couldn't really get into it, but it's not a bad game. It's a Zelda-style game with more of an RPG approach to it. The more enemies you kill, the more experience you get, which leads to a level up, which allows you to put points in certain stats to make you better prepared. I'm unsure of the story. Uh, you're a girl that comes out from a tree, and then things happen that you gotta kill stuff and crawl in dungeons and probably face some big evil guy at the end. My real big gripe is that there seems to be a lot of backtracking, at least early on. I had to go to a town on the far side of the early map, then I'm told I need to find three golden eggs that have now magically appeared. They weren't there before. So this forces me to go back to almost the beginning of the area to get all of the eggs. But guess what? I gotta go back to the other side of the map to give the eggs to the person. 
And then I have to go back to an earlier area on the other side of the map yet again to go into a temple that I now have a key for because I gave the person the three golden eggs. <sighs> I really don't mind retracking in areas, but forcing it in such a way just isn't that fun to me. Probably the highest rated game on our list, at least when I last played it. Sagittarian is a choose your own adventure game, but I really question the choose your own adventure game part, because I feel it's more of a trial and error game. Choose your own adventure seems to indicate that there be multiple paths and different endings to those paths or at least they can intersect at some point. Trial and error means that you go and find if something works one way, and if you don't, you go the other way. And it falls into the trial and error category because there's only one ending. If you go off the branch that you're supposed to, excluding a few things at the very beginning, you will die. There's no end ifs or buts about it. You will end up dying because of some reason. That's not a good choose your own adventure game. It's a good trial and error game, but don't call your game a choose your own adventure game when it's really not. But back to the point. The story involves a zombie apocalypse and it has occurred and you must carefully choose the right actions to make sure you survive because odds are you probably won't survive the first time because it's a trial and error game, not a choose your own adventure. Not the first game to have a tower defense game involving computer viruses, but if you do it well, it really doesn't matter. There's not much difference in this TD game from others. Build towers to kill waves of enemies so that you get more money to buy more towers or to upgrade your old ones. Rinse and repeat until you die or they end. Unlike most TD games, moving on doesn't require you to hold off all the waves. Rather, you just need to kill enough enemies to unlock the next level. This might mean that you have to repeat a few stages multiple times to move on if you really suck at some of the levels. You control a gray goo ball that starts out harmlessly enough as a tiny goo ball that's been created to help clean the world. As one would guess from a cliche book, Things don't quite work out, and before you know it, that goo ball is getting bigger and bigger. The game is very Katamari Damacy-esque. You start out very small and must collect small objects at first, but you eventually grow and take larger and larger objects. Unlike Katamari though, several of these objects end up being living things that have to come from off screen. So you have to often wait for them to come on screen over finding stuff in the environment, which would have been wiser and saved you some time. If you like the original, like me, you are sure to love this one as well. If you haven't played it, the game has several puzzles that you have to solve, and these puzzles are scenes from the cutscenes that was happening just prior to the puzzle starting. Some of these puzzles can be a little difficult as characters or objects are sometimes moving through them, but it's never really that hard. The only negative about this game is that I really wish there was more puzzles than there were. But there is an option to use your webcam and it will create a puzzle from the video showing. Like of my hat laying on my bed. You are a rookie mining canary who must get through the mines to find out what strange happenings have been going on. You're equipped with a mining laser in which you must use to cut down pillars of rocks and to defeat the strange creatures you find. The game can be surprisingly difficult at times. Perhaps this is because there is a scrolling screen and if you're too slow, you will end up dying or will often run into something that will harm you. Can you make it out? The unimaginable has happened! And no, it's not another zombie apocalypse. All of the people and objects in the world have become 2D objects and only you are still able to move around in a 3D plane. And you have the ability to take these 2D objects and put them on different planes. Using your power, it's up to you to solve the puzzles of getting to your goal and to help turn the world back to its rightful dimension. And with that, we come to the end of the first part of our week's video. Tomorrow, we'll have up the rest of our video. So stay tuned, subscribe to us to make sure that you know when exactly it does come out. So till then, please fave, like, comment, and tell your friends about this video, and you know, go football teams.
I mean, no one's gonna eat your eyes All we wanna do is eat your brains We're at an impasse here Maybe we should compromise